In this video, we will talk about numerical integration in Mathematica. In the previous two videos, we demonstrated Lagrange interpolation and showed how you can use this formula to interpolate a smooth function f of x. And uh, here, li of x are the Lagrange basis polynomials. If you haven't watched the videos on Lagrange interpolation, please go back and watch the last two videos. Having constructed uh, an interpolating function, we can do any numerical operation on it. For example, we can simply integrate this equation and construct a numerical integration scheme. Integrating both sides of this equation leads to an equality like this. And uh, the only quantity that depends on x here is Li of x, the Lagrange basis polynomials. If we integrate that from A to B, uh, then we get this formula. We can call this quantity Wi, and uh, we call these quantities weights of integration. So numerical integration becomes simply a linear operation whereby we construct the product wi times f of xi and sum over i. When the nodes are equidistant, as we've seen previously, uh, this kind of uh, integration formula is called Newton Coates quadrature. Uh, if the nodes are Chebyshev nodes, then this kind of integration rule is called clenshaw curtis quadrature. And we will go ahead and see a few examples of both of these kinds of quadratures. So first of all, let's discuss the trapezoidal rule. Let's assume that we have a function f of x shown in blue here, and we want to integrate from a to b. We know that we can simply draw a trapezoid and connect this point A to point B and uh, calculate the area of this, uh, of this trapezoid. And the formula for doing that is that um, the area of a trapezoid is the small base plus the large base, so A plus B times the height, excuse me, the small base f of a plus uh, the large base f of b times the height, the height of the trapezoid, which is b minus a, divided by 2. We can derive this formula here uh, as an example of Lagrange interpolation. So as shown in the in a previous lecture on interpolation, uh, we can use Mathematica to construct an interpolating polynomial that goes through the points x1, f1 and x2, f2. Then that's a function of x. So if we use Lagrange interpolation to compute this polynomial, then we can simply integrate this expression. So let's say integrate p of x with respect to x from a to b. Now um, I shouldn't use a to b here because the points I used here are x1 and x2 so let's change those x1 and x2. Okay so this is exactly what I mentioned earlier this is a trapezoidal rule. So f1 is the small base, f2 is the large base, x2 minus x1 is the height, and we divide by 2. That's the trapezoidal rule. We can make this formula look a bit more familiar by replacing x1 by uh, x2 by x1 plus h, where h is the height of the trapezoid. or uh, it's the special 
uh, the grid spacing x2 minus x1 uh, but we have to replace the quantity here as well x1 plus h and uh, do this again and uh, we can also simplify this expression and uh, indeed this is a trapezoidal rule if we want to uh, calculate the area in a, in a large interval of course uh, this is not going to be a good approximation uh, so instead we could uh, cut up the the, inter the, the area into smaller sub intervals and use the trapezoidal rule in smaller areas as shown in, in this figure here so each of those uh, little areas is uh, approximated by a trapezoid and we can easily calculate the area of those trapezoids and add them up together and doing that amounts to using the composite trapezoidal rule so that means calculate the first integral uh, like this f1 plus f2 times h over 2 and assuming that we're using an equidistant grid uh, the spacing for this green trapezoid is also h and then we're using the approximation f2 plus f3 divided by 2 and so on so if we keep adding these uh, trapezoid uh, areas uh, together we end up with a formula that that looks like this where um, let's say n minus 1 is the this point and n is this last point and I have grouped everything together here we see that we can pull out the h over 2 and that f1 appears once f2 appears here and here so it appears twice and f3 appears once here and once in the next term so that also appears twice and so on so all points appear twice except the first and last point which only appears appear once so we can uh, factor out the these uh, weights here and uh, write the formula uh, in in this form except now instead of using one polynomial we, we're using a composite rule that means we're using piecewise polynomials uh, so a polynomial of, of second order in each of those sub intervals um, and that second order interpolating polynomial is easy to obtain using Lagrange interpolation so if we want to write down the weights uh, the weights are given by an expression like this where this is the first weight h divided by 2 the second weight is h the third weight is h and so on and the last weight is h divided by 2 again so if we wanted to calculate this whole area all we have to do is construct the vector w that, that contains all of these weights and then sum over the weights uh, times f of the function values f of xi and we if we store these weights in a vector w and these function values in another vector f then we could simply calculate the dot product of uh, w dotted onto f and in that case we see that numerical integra integration simply amounts to a vector vector multiplication we will show an ex explicit example of that uh, a bit later in the video but for now let's try and uh, derive a higher order rule so let's uh, follow this syntax here and uh, calculate an interpolating polynomial going through three points instead of two so that would be a third order polynomial and then I can say I can ask Mathematica to do n integrate I'm sorry I mean n integrate p of x with respect to x from x1 to x3 and uh, this is the result um, we could also use the palette here 
to do the same calculation. So integrate from x1 to x3 and the function is p of x integrated with respect to dx and we get the exact same result. So integrate um, or using the, the palette lead to the same result. And uh, here I haven't told Mathematica that the grid is equidistant. We can do that and simplify our result. So for example, I can use, uh, I can change the grid points in here or I can use a replacement rule. So I can use slash dot and then I can say uh, replace x3 by x1 plus 2h and replace x2 by x1 plus h and then simplify the result. And then we get this much simpler formula again h is this uh, grid spacing let me delete that which is not needed anymore uh, so this formula right here is called simpson's rule so let's write that down uh, this is simpson's rule uh, we can see this visually in this figure here um, again, we have some function f of x and we approximate the function between two points a and b uh, with the second order uh, Lagrange interpolating polynomial. Um, sorry, that, that's a third order polynomial that goes through these. Um, actually, it's a second order polynomial that goes through th these three points. So a second order polynomial has uh, three unknown coefficients and it can be used to interpolate those three points. The polynomial we used earlier was actually first order. So it it is a line essentially and uh, it's a function of the form a -A ax plus b and uh, it has two unknown coefficients and as we know, we can use the method of undetermined coefficients to interpolate those two points um, and solve these two collocation conditions and obtain these two coefficients. So uh, using a, a linear interpolation here essentially led to the trapezoidal rule, which is a rule that's second order accurate. And uh, over here, when we do a quadratic inter interpolation essentially uh, this orange function here is a parabola that goes through those three points um, this is quadratic interpolation and when we integrate that we get this rule and it can be shown that this rule is third order accurate so the error is of order h to the third power now again um, we can construct a composite Simpson's rule uh, by joining many s smaller intervals like that together. So if we want to integrate over a larger area, we can split up the area in smaller intervals and uh, integrate over each of those using Simpson's rule. So um, we can take three points here, use Simpson's rule here, and then take the next three points, or actually the next two points, and uh, integrate over this green subinterval using the Simpson's rule, and so on. And doing that uh, leads to an integration rule that looks uh, almost like that. Actually, we shouldn't have a two here, otherwise this would be a trapezoidal rule. So. So um, let's correct this. So um, this is the composite Simpson rule. We have uh, f1 plus 4f2 plus f3, as we just showed here, 
times h over 3. And then we have f3 plus 4f4 4 plus f5. So f3 appears twice. So we group those terms together and we have 2f3. And then for the same reason f5 appears twice. So we have 2f5 and so on. So the composite Simpson rule consists of a formula that simply alternates between 4 and 2. Uh, except the first and last terms uh, that only have one in front of them and then we multiply by h over 3. Um, so simply making this small change uh, compared to the composite trapezoidal rule that we had here increases the accuracy of the method considerably. Uh, from second order method we go to a third order method. Uh, so uh, if we try that in practice, and we'll try it in a bit, we get um, significantly higher accuracy. And again, you can store these coefficients in a vector w, and then uh, again, numerical integration amounts to vector-vector multiplication, as we will sh uh, see shortly. We can also uh, go higher order and construct a, a higher order rule. So um, let's copy what we did here. And uh, let's suppose we want to uh, construct a higher accuracy rule. We can add the fourth point here. So let's call this x4, f4. And uh, Let's substitute uh, x4 and replace it with uh, x1 plus 3h. And let's change the interval in the regression from x1 to x4 and, and simplify the expression. So again, we construct an interpolating polynomial going through four points now. So that's a third order polynomial. And uh, we are assuming a good distant grid where the grid spacing is h between uh, each consecutive grid point, and we're integrating from x1 to x4. Uh, so this is the polynomial, and we're waiting for Mathmat to calculate analytically this integral, and this is the result. So this equation here is uh, is called Simpson's three-eighths uh, rule. Um, you can keep going uh, higher in order like that. Um, so let's do it once more, one last time. Let's add the fifth point. Let's call this x5 and uh, the function value is f5. And uh, let's assume again that the points are equidistant for simplicity. So we replace uh, the last point by x1 plus 4h, four, four where h is the grid spacing. And let's put a 5 here. So we're integrating from the first point, x1, up to the last point, x5. And we calculated the interpolating polynomial based on Lagrange interpolation. And we're integrating analytically. This is a bit more complicated expression, so it will take a while for Mathematica to calculate this integral uh, and to simplify the expression. But after the simplification, we get something that looks like much simpler than the function we're integrating. Um, and uh, this rule is known in the literature as Boole's rule. So let's comment here uh, Boole's rule. Um, so all of these formulas are different types of uh, Newton codes formulas for of different orders. So we constructed a second order, third order, fourth order and uh, and the fifth order rule. 
you can keep going higher however as we showed earlier if you use equidistant grid points to interpolate uh, a function you're going to run into Runge's phenomenon and so eventually you will lose accuracy um, so it's best to increase the order a little bit but not too much and then split the interval to smaller sub-intervals sub and then use a composite rule um, to calculate the, the integral uh, from from A to B or from X1 to X5 in this case and so on. Now you can go to Mathematica's documentation over here uh, and search for N integrate integration rules and uh, you will find a very nice tutorial and it discusses uh, Newton codes formulas and uh, their derivation and you can explicitly use Mathematica commands to build the weights for such integration rules uh, you can also find trapezoidal rule here and so on um, and you can also find uh, the clenshaw curtis rule that we are about to discuss as well as other rules like Monte Carlo simulations or uh, gauss chrono Gaussian integration and so on So um, let's go ahead and discuss Clenshaw Curtis quadrature. So uh, Clenshaw Curtis quadrature is the rule we get when we apply the Chebyshev grid points and interpolate them with a Lagrange interpolating polynomial. Um, now, if you want to Mathematica to use that rule and do that integration you can use for example uh, the example that's shown here uh, but we're going to try that explicitly ourselves and build the Clenshaw Curtis weights ourselves um, but let's try that uh, just for to see an example so uh, of course we can say um, integrate this function 1 over square root of x from 0 to 1 and Mathematica can do that analytically and find that the result is 2 um, you can also say n integrate and then Mathematica will apply a numerical uh, method to calculate this integral numerically uh, so if I do that I find 2 or 2.0 uh, to some accuracy so up to almost machine precision so only the last digit is is inaccurate here so uh, we can actually put this uh, together and uh, subtract them and see that the error is over 10 to the minus 15 so uh, very close to machine precision but uh, you can also specify the method here in any integrate and say I want to use the Clenshaw Curtis rule and let's see what the accuracy is uh, so let's calculate the analytical result the numerical result and then check the accuracy and the accuracy is around 10 to the minus 11 of course there are more options here you can ask Mathematica to use more points and so on uh, you can use the documentation and uh, just say question mark and then integ and integrate and then if you open the local or the web documentation you will find ways to increase the accuracy and use more points uh, if you click in the options here you can use accuracy goal and so on um, to get uh, higher accuracy Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, and build those weights for the Clenshaw-Curtis quadrature. 
So um, you can calculate those weights based on this formula and uh, using the Chebyshev uh, nodes that are extrema of Chebyshev polynomials that we introduced in the previous video on pseudospectral methods and pseudospectral interpolation in Mathematica. Um, but uh, here I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and, and provide the formulas. Um, the formulas can be found in in, uh, in Wikipedia, so you can simply search for Clenshaw Curtis quadrature, um, or you can search the mathematical documentation uh, that I showed earlier, or you can look into this book, Spectral Methods in MATLAB, which uh, describes uh, pseudospectral methods, um, Chebyshev quadrature, and Clenshaw Curtis quadrature in this case. And there is a very nice comparison with Gaussian quadrature, which we will not discuss today. Uh, so instead, we will focus on Clenshaw Curtis quadrature. So uh, let's construct a, a grid and uh, using Chebyshev nodes. So we showed earlier that these uh, uh, are the nodes. They're equidistant in the angle theta, uh, but not equidistant in x. So x is the cosine of, of that angle, uh, angle theta that's equidistant. So let's suppose we want to calculate this uh, integral again for, of 1 over square root of x. So let's call this function f of x and uh, it's 1 over square root of x and uh, let's grid up the problem and let's suppose I want to use 33 grid points so these are the 33 grid points going from 0 to 1 and then if you want Mathematica to calculate the weights for you you could use this formula, uh, this command. Uh, so you can use any integrate Clenshaw Curtis rule data and uh, you can extract the weights. Um, I think you would have to use 33 here, but this may not work uh, because this may only work for an even number of grid points, actually. Um, so let's do 32. Uh, let's do 16 actually just to make it more manageable at first so if you do that these are the weights that Mathematica tells you these are the Clenshaw Curtis uh, weights for integration um, you could get them by directly integrating these uh, Lagrange interpolating basis polynomials um, but let's try and implement a formula based on this book. Uh, but before we do that, actually, so these are the the abscissas, the, the grid points. These are not the way, the weights. Uh, so if we want the weights, then we can get them using this command. So. Uh, when you when we use this command, we get the weights and the grid points together. So um, if I use bracket bracket one, then I get the grid points, and if I use bracket bracket two, I get the weights, which is the second part of, of the list. Um, and then I use chop to uh, drop small numbers like ten to the minus sixteen and so on. Um, okay, so these are the grid points and these are the weights as you can see the grid points already coincide with what we calculated earlier uh, using Chebyshev nodes uh, but let's see um, if the formula that we get uh, from this book uh, spectral methods in MATLAB uh, so I went ahead and implemented the formula um, it has an if statement because there's a different expression depending on whether uh, you have an even or odd number of grid points. So uh, if you have an even number of grid points, then the weights 
are given by this list here. You have to calculate a sum over k here. Um, and uh, remember, theta is a vector of grid points or of uh, angles here. And um, cosine is a listable function. So once you calculate the cosine of n theta, then that gives you a list of numbers w. And this list is uh, the individual weights, w1, w2, and so on. Um, and uh, there is an explicit sum here, so Mathematic will do this sum uh, automatically for you. And uh, if the number of grid points is odd, then we use a different formula. And then um, this formula applies from for integration from minus 1 to 1, actually. Uh, and if you want to integrate over a different interval, then you have to rescale, linearly rescale those weights. So the rescaling, uh, you can do it simply by multiplying w with uh, b minus a over 2. Um, okay, so if, again, if uh, the number of grid points is even, we use this formula. And if the number of grid points is odd, we use this formula. Um, and uh, in each case, we have to replace the first and last weight. So the first one is given by this expression, and the last one is equal to the first one. Uh, and the same is true here. Uh, the first weight is given by this expression, and the last weight, uh, so w minus 1, that's the last element of the list, is equal to the first. Um, OK, so. Um, now, f for Mathematica, you can only use this command for even, for an even number of grid points because you have to divide by two here, and uh, I'm not sure sure how to do it for an odd number of points uh, using a Mathematica command. But uh, we can always use this expression, which is true for either even or odd uh, number of points. So let's try this, and we see that indeed the weights that we get from this formula are the same as the ones that Mathematica gives us. So we're on the right track here. We we think we get the right weights and the right uh, uh, grid points. So let's try and calculate uh, an integral. So. Um, as I said before, uh, numerical integration simply amounts to a dot product between vectors. So after we build the grid points, I can simply calculate f of x. And uh, unfortunately, we ran into complex infinity <coughs> because the first grid point is 0, uh, and we have 1 over 0 there. So let's pick a slightly different function to integrate over. So um, to avoid this infinity, um, let's try square root of x. So the weights, of course, are not going to change. Um, so let's calculate f of x. And then all we need to do is dot w onto f of x. And that gives us an approximation uh, for, the, for this integral. So let's also try the integrate f of x with respect to x from a to b. And the result is 2 thirds. Now, uh, of course, this is only four or five digits accurate, but that's to be expected because I use a very low number of grid points. I only use 16 grid points. So let's try and use more. So let's try 33. Um, and let's use now because it's an odd number of points, we can't use Mathematica's commands, but we can still use ours. So let's try this. And now we get more accuracy. Um, Let's try something bigger, 256. And let's check the accuracy now. And 
and okay the the accuracy actually uh, increases pretty slowly for for this function um, let, the reason is uh, that this function has um, a non-smooth uh, derivative near the origin so let's try um, a smoother function so we know that uh, pseudo-spectral methods run into problems when the function you're using uh, has a discontinuity or a discontinuity in the derivative and so on so let's try uh, a smoother function like e to the minus x squared um, and let's start with a few points again so let's say 16 and then use this again to calculate the points and this is the integral calculated analytically this is the integral calculated numerically and let's subtract the two and now we see that for a smooth function like this one we get machine precision very accurate result to 16 digits uh, by only using 16 points so um, again pseudo spectral methods Chebyshev collocation methods uh, in particular clenshaw curtis quadrature in this case converges very rapidly uh, when the function you're integrating is a very smooth function so if you want you can compare the accuracy with a different method uh, so let's try the methods some of the methods that we introduced earlier like the trapezoidal rule um, so to do that let's uh, essentially uh, repeat this um, except now we will use um, okay so again we're going from 0 to 1 and um, this time uh, I wrote the function a bit different e to the minus x squared using the palette and then uh, we can use the table command to construct an equidistant grid and um, dx is the grid spacing um, so let's try this so uh, the weights are given by the formula I showed earlier um, when we talked about the trapezoidal rule at the beginning of this video so the weights are h or dx delta x um, and then times one half for the first weight and times one for the second and so on and in the end you have one and one half so um, so basically we use an if statement so if i equals zero or i equals n you have one half otherwise all other points in between you have one and then that's multiplied by the grid spacing which is b minus a over n in this case b minus a um, amounts to this so actually uh, what i've written here applies for the interval from minus one to one um, because this is an even function we could integrate from minus one to one um, but uh, I only want to integrate from 0 to 1 and that will be one half the integral that goes from minus 1 to 1 uh, but let's just be more uh, general and use this uh, linear uh, rescaling of the interval that goes from minus 1 to 1 uh, it maps it uh, to another interval from A to B so now we're more flexible we can use any value of A and B here um, and uh, let's delete those bits because we don't need them anymore um, okay so so now these are uh, the grid points x and these are the weights and I can use n to calculate those numerically so let's use n here 
and n here. And now let's try f of x. Okay, so these are function values. And now let's try dot them onto w. Okay, and then uh, this result is similar to what we had before. Um, but let's subtract this exact result from the numerical result uh, and see what we get. So we see that our result is uh, only five digits accurate. And that's to be ex expected because we're using a trapezoidal rule, which is only second order in accuracy. Uh, whereas the clenshaw curtis rule is uh, based on a um, pseudo-spectral method, so it converges exponentially. Um, now, again, here I used, I think, uh, let's see, we used 33 grid points. We can try and use more to increase accuracy. Let's use 64. And you can see the accuracy improves a little bit, but it improves very slowly. Um, so 128. Uh, okay, now we have six digits of accuracy and so on. You, you need to use a very large number of points uh, to start getting a few digits of accuracy, but that's to be expected with a second order method. So if you want more accuracy, you can use the Simpsons rule that we introduced earlier, or you can use the um, clenshaw curtis quadrature that we just discussed. Um, there is, however, a way to increase accuracy very easily uh, and still use an equidistant grid without having to use the Simpsons rule. And uh, that's uh, possible by using a different rule uh, called the Hermite rule. So uh, the rules we've discussed so far are based on Lagrange interpolation. So uh, in basically interpolating function values only. However, uh, a lot of the time uh, you may have information about the derivatives of the functions that's available. Uh, and as we discussed earlier, using you can use Hermite interpolation uh, to construct interpolated polynomials uh, that oscillate the function and uh, respect the derivative values. So we can build integration rules uh, based on Hermit interpolation. So let's show an example of that. Uh, so if you haven't watched the video on uh, Hermit interpolation, please go back and watch that video again. Um, so again, uh, we could construct a Hermit interpolating polynomial using the method of undetermined coefficients or we can invoke this mathematical command interpolating polynomial and we specify the function values here x1 and x2 are the grid points f1 f2 are the function values and df1 and df2 are the values of the derivative of f at those points x1 and x2 so uh, there's a unique polynomial satisfying these conditions and uh, um, after you construct this polynomial using the method of adding term coefficients or the Hermite interpolation formula or simply this mathematical command, uh, you can try and integrate this polynomial uh, from the first point x1 up to the second or last point x2. And let's integrate that polynomial and simplify. And what we get here is something that looks like uh, the first two terms if you take six out of the parentheses you have six over 12 which is one over two so we have h over two here and that's what we had for the trapezoidal rule so you can think of this expression as a trapezoidal rule with a correction um, that is based on derivative information so we can write this uh, formula uh, a bit more um, in mathematical notation. So uh, this is called, uh, this is known as Hermite's rule. 
so the integral from a to b is approximated by the trapezoidal rule plus this correction based on derivative values. Um, an interesting point to note is that um, this correction comes with a minus sign, which means that if we try and create a composite Hermite rule, all of these terms will cancel out except the first and last term. So uh, that's if we use an equidistant grid, of course, so that the h is the same everywhere. Uh, and h is b minus a. That's a grid uh, sp spacing. Actually, um, if you have uh, one subinterval, otherwise it's b minus a divided by n, where n is the number of grid points. So uh, let's try and apply a composite version of Hermite uh, rule to this integral that we just uh, uh, calculated. So um, basically, we don't need to change anything. Uh, the weights are the same as for the trapezoidal rule. All we have to do is add this correction term, basically. And all the intermediate terms in the sum, uh, if we do a sum like this, uh, like here, so we can do Hermite rule here, Hermite rule here, Hermite rule here, and so on. Then, again, the first uh, terms will look exactly like the trapezoidal rule. And then there will be, will be a second row here with derivative values, but they're all going to cancel out because they are all equal to each other. And they come with a minus sign. So F2 minus F2, and then F3 minus F3, and so on. All of these will cancel out and only the first and last point will remain because those don't uh, show up twice so these don't can cancel out from the sum um, so that means uh, all i have to do really to apply hermite's rule is to do w dot f of x and then add the correction term and the correction term is f prime of a minus f prime of b and then multiply this uh, with this correction 1 over 12 b minus a squared is actually b minus a um, over n so um so let's let's actually give this a name so h is um b minus a over the number of points so that's the grid spacing now um, so now we can if we use many points um, with a composite, composite uh, Hermite rule so let's write this down uh, composite Hermite rule okay let's hide this um, Okay, so this is the result. It looks similar to what we had before. Uh, but let's check the accuracy now. So let's subtract this from the exact result. And we see now that simply by adding this correction, we have 12-digit uh, accuracy. So we're subtracting the numerical result from the composite Hermite rule. Uh, we're subtracting that from the... We're, we're subtracting the exact result from the numerical result and we find an error of 10 to the minus 12 approximately. Uh, so that is six more digits of accuracy, six orders of magnitude more accurate than the trapezoidal rule. Um, you can study the error terms and you will see that the trapezoidal rule is second order inaccurate and the Hermite rule is fourth order accurate. And accu actually you can even construct higher order rules um, and let's uh, try one in a minute. Um, 
and actually the error decreases quite rapidly as you keep adding more derivatives uh, to to these uh, rules that use derivative information. So let's try and add more derivatives here. So let's suppose that we also know second order derivatives. So d2 f1 is the second derivative at f1 and uh, d2 f2 is the second derivative at f2 and uh, we don't need to change anything else. We're still using only two points but we're simply increasing the number of derivatives that we assume are known at those points. So if we do that, uh, mathematical will compute the oscillating interpolating polynomial uh, that goes through those points and respects the derivative values and then uh, doing this integral gives us this expression. <coughs> um, this expression is not quite right because uh, it's using a value of h that I specified here, uh, a numerical value of h. So let's clear the value of h by using h equals dot and let's do this calculation again. Okay, so now we get uh, a more reasonable expression. So again, if you divide 60 by 120, you get one half. So the first two terms are the trapezoidal rule. Uh, the next two terms are 12 by 120, that's one over 10. Uh, so that's a correction based on derivative information. And then there's a correction one over 120 that's based on second derivative information. Um, this rule is known as Lotkin's rule. Um, so let's write it more formally. Uh, so this is Lotkin's uh, rule. So again, um, it's the trapezoidal rule plus a correction based on derivatives plus a correction based on second derivatives. And um, Notice that the term here, it was 1 over 12 before in, the, in this uh, expression, the Hermite's rule. But as you increase the order uh, of the derivatives that you keep in the formula, these terms can change. Uh, they're not always going to be the same. And um, notice also that over here, the next correction appears with a plus instead of a minus. So that means if we use a composite rule, these terms will not cancel out. They have to be summed over just like over here. Uh, and obviously you can build your own rule. You can build your favorite rule by simply deciding how many points you want to consider. You can add more points here. For example, you can add x1, x2 and x3. And you can add a number of derivatives. Uh, however many you think you have available and uh, to use and then build your favorite integration rule uh, based on this method of undetermined coefficients and then simply integrating this result analytically. Um, a very important property of the rules uh, we just discussed like uh, the Hermite rule here and uh, Lotkin's rule here uh, is that these rules are symmetric under exchange of A to B. So if we flip uh, A with B, then the integral will change sign. And uh, this term doesn't change, it's symmetric under exchange of A to B. This term doesn't change. This term will also change sign. Uh, but uh, remember h will also change sign a square stays the same h cubed will change sign when b minus a becomes a minus b so in the end the formula stays the same uh, if you exchange a to b that is very important uh, because it preserves a very fundamental symmetry so for example if you use this to integrate the system forward in time then it means that whether i integrate forward in time and go from t1 to t2 
or if I integrate backwards going from T2 to T1, I will end up where I started. I will not end up somewhere else. And um, that's very important because uh, it means that if we use this method to integrate uh, dynamical systems, then we will conserve uh, quantities like the energy or symplectic structure. And we will see more examples of that uh, in the next lectures when we discuss integrating ordinary differential equations in time. Um, another important point is that um, in, in many cases uh, this makes use of derivative information that is uh, analytically available. Uh, for example, let's suppose we solve, uh, we want to solve a very simple differential equation of the form uh, x uh, dot or x prime, or that's dx by dt, derivative respect to x. So let's suppose that dx by dt is a times x. Then uh, we can use this rule to integrate forward in time and uh, the higher order derivatives can be obtained simply by differentiating this uh, ordinary differential equation. So if we simply calculate one time derivative of this, then uh, we have a x prime, but x prime is already known from this uh, differential equation. So uh, we know that x prime is a x. So we, we substitute here, we get x a, a squared times x. And uh, we can repeat doing this over and over and calculate all higher order derivatives of x. And then we can use this formula to integrate forward in time. We will do that in the next lecture. Um, but the point is that uh, when using this type of scheme to integrate ordinary differential equations, uh, we just demonstrated that the derivative information is already available for free simply by using the differential equation itself. Um, finally, um, I want to say that this kind of rules are special cases of a much more general rule. Uh, so although we introduced these uh, interpolating polynomials as using a Hermite interpolation formula, you can also think of that as a Taylor expansion. In particular, it's a two-point Taylor expansion. Uh, so the lowest order polynomial is a, a line that connects two points as we showed here when we derived the trapezoidal rule um, so a two-point Taylor expansion between two points x1 and x2 is is a line connecting those two um, but you can add the der derivative information so um, the next approximation is when we add the first derivative to the first point and then sec another derivative to the second point and uh, this term is the second uh, approximation to the two-point Taylor exp expansion and then you can keep adding derivatives like uh, we did here um, so there is a more general formula that we can you can find it in the lecture notes uh, which integrates a general two-point Taylor expansion uh, between two points and derives uh, a general formula like that that's valid to arbitrary order. Um, and uh, obviously the two-point Taylor expansion has this symmetry property again that is symmetric under exchange uh, of A and B. One could also do a one-point Taylor expansion. So uh, we can do that using the command uh, series and use f of x or um, let's clear the function f of x before we do that. And then we can say series f of x and then respect to x and let's do an expansion about let's say the point a actually let's clear the point a also um, 
Okay, F is already cleared. Uh, we don't need this. Um, so, um, and let's say we want to keep three terms in the Taylor expansion. So Mathematica will automatically calculate this Taylor series for you. Um, so the first term is f of a, then f prime of a times x minus a, f double prime of a, x minus a squared, and so on. And uh, plus a term of order x minus a to the fourth. I can say normal, and this will get rid of this extra symbol here, and it will convert that to a simple polynomial that uh, we can integrate over. So let's call this uh, it's a Taylor polynomial, let's call it t of x. And now I can use the palette or I can use say integrate and t of x with respect to x from a to b. We need to also clear b before we do this symbolically. Um, so let's calculate this integral analytically. Um, and we get uh, an expression like this. So we can also simplify, uh, although that will not help much in this case, uh, not as much as it helped before. Um, because uh, b doesn't show up in here, we simply expanded uh, the polynomial about a and integrated from a to b. Um, so we see now that um, this formula, uh, unlike the formulas that we discussed earlier, is not symmetric uh, with respect to exchange uh, of a and b. And that's to be expected because I calculated a Taylor expansion uh, about the point A instead of uh, about both A and B. So we could also expand about B, but um, again, the formula will not be symmetric. Uh, so we see that we have terms here like F of A, F of A and F prime of A uh, and so on. And F double prime of A. Uh, but there's no per terms like f of b and so on. Um, so we will revisit this topic when we discuss uh, differential equations. But for now, the thing to keep in mind is that um, if the formula that you're using to integrate is symmetric, then you're likely to preserve symmetries of your system. If the formula you're using to integrate is not symmetric, then you're likely to violate some symmetries of the underlying system uh, that you're trying to approximate. And uh, more details uh, will be provided in the next few lectures on ordinary and partial differential equations we will, where we will discuss um, symmetries and conservation of energy um, and symplectic structure for differential equations in much more detail. Thank you for watching.